Tensions between rival pro-free speech and anti-hate rallies have boiled over in the US city of Seattle after police moved in with pepper spray and stun grenades to disperse protesters. Well, the conservative rally was organised by a pro-Trump group called Patriot Prayer, billed as a supporter of free speech. It was confronted by counter-protesters who were shouting insults before riot police blocked their path. A group of demonstrators attempted to force their way through the barricade, some of them threw fireworks and stones. Three people have been arrested. Well, the Seattle scuffles came just one day after street brawls at a white nationalist rally in Virginia turned deadly when a car rammed a crowd of counter-protesters. And in the latest development, a Twitter campaign is now underway to try and find out who took part in the Unite the Right rally, with one person already losing his job for attending. Samira Khan has more on the division in U.S. society. Recent clashes in Seattle and the tragic events that took place in Virginia have really exposed the extent of the division in U.S. society, and not even the president and his team can deny this. Let's take a look. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. What terrorism is, is the use of violence to incite terror and fear. And of course it was terrorism. It all began way back during the U.S. presidential campaign with pro and anti-Trump rallies springing up all across the country. Uh, but both sides had been throwing accusations and insults at each other even before Election Day, as you might expect, given a campaign was in full swing. I would say we're more open-minded. We're kind of more moderate. Well-educated people. A lot of uh, educated people uh, that are sensible. They were kind of arrogant, weren't they? Yeah. I'm not to judge what other people's education and stuff is. It's, it's not surprising. The, the country's divided in half. But following the bombshell result of the election, half of the country was left in discontent. So much so for that. So much so that for some, they went beyond rhetoric to vent their frustration, as we saw with the violence in Berkeley, which became one of the main uh, battlegrounds. <laughs> Extreme left-wing activists have gone even as far as attempting to assassinate a Republican lawmaker. Now both the newly formed far right and the far left are feeling sufficiently emboldened to come out onto the streets and wreak havoc all across America. The violence in Virginia over the weekend should have been a sign to stop, but even more took place in Seattle. So it seems that seething tensions and violent clashes, which resulted in dozens injured and even one death, are becoming the new way that Americans resolve their political and social disputes. The dean of Durham University's law school told us that both the right and the left are becoming more extreme. The political dimension is you have very much a clear right and left split in American uh, politics, uh, right and left split that seems to be um, without much of a center ground, um, as you know, with a, a lot of space in the middle. The right has become more right, and and some would say the left has become uh, more left. The country's become more polarized, and people are not. Uh, and, you know, Donald Trump has promised to uh, bring people together, but it seems that people have never been uh, further apart um, under under his rule. He will not divide us. It's about unity. United we stand, divided we fall. What about the rest of the country that's not offended by Trump? Do I respect the choice of the people who got him elected? And I see the Democrats as the biggest dividers. He will not divide us! He will not divide us! He will not divide us! No. <laughs> I don't. He will not divide us! He will not divide us! This is our country! Our country! One of the reasons I won the election is we have a very, very divided nation.